प्रतीक वेलकम टू योर नेक्स्ट मूव हे 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 व्हाट्स अप श्रेय थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस शो थैंक्स अ लॉट एंड आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड टू बी हर एंड जस्ट फॉर ऑल द व्यूअर्स हुज गोना वॉच दिस श्रेय एंड आई हैव बीन बैचमेट इन आर कॉलेज एंड आई एम रियली ग्लैड दैट आई एम वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट पर्सन फ्रॉम आर बैच टू बी इन्वाइटेड टू दिस शो फ्रॉम ऑल द अदर more talented people that are there in our batch who are doing great things and uh, really excited to be here indeed you are the first one prateek the pleasure is all mine the first question i guess is obvious why has 2020 been the year of edtech is it because of the fact that we were pushed indoors due to the corona virus or was it an idea whose time had come anyway see Jay, there is no direct answer to this and, the, and you know the answer to this question will always be given in hindsight right also you know clubbing edtech entirely might also not be the right thing to do it comprises of you know edtech usually comprises of see early education there's tuitions there's test preparation there's extra curricular there's vocational and a lot of other things now the edtech starters have started right so you know while some of the above mentioned categories have got an impetus and a hockey stick adoption curve because of covid but others are still fairly at a nascent stage you know having said that uh, relevance of edtech is now more than ever as it addresses a lot of fundamental problems in relation to the overall education system so you know to answer your uh, question shortly yes the time has arrived uh, it was uh, meant to be something that is way ahead of its time uh, people were not really comfortable like it's it's decades of unlearning of what you have been used uh to usually uh le- learn in uh, school and uh, tuitions uh to now finally move it to online is going to take some time but i think the time has arrived and yes covid has given uh an impetus right a much needed impetus in fact we've seen in the last few weeks that an edtech brand approached advertising in a manner that was not just tone deaf but also tapped into indian parents insecurities in the worst way possible while we all agree that such messaging cannot be sustained in the long run but do you agree that there has been a spike in user acquisition in the short run can a brand get away scot free after acquiring users in such a manner or do you feel it does not affect acquisitions in any way <laughs> see see uh say it's a it's a classic we are just saying what the people you know you know when you ask uh anything that's wrong with messaging right it's the classic response that we are just saying what the people already want to listen or what people already believe see but however in a country like india and a noble serious profession like education brands need to be very sure about their right. long term purpose or why they exist if that purpose is to make billionaires out of kids which could be a very relevant and a successful short term acquisition strategy <laughs> but sooner or later will fall flat in its face right uh, there is a reason why fair and lovely had to move from you know uh, move to glow and lovely to address the changing right. consumer mind after selling the dream of fair skin for decades so eventually reality will catch up uh, no brand goes scot free either it will be forced to change or it will have to deal with a competition who does the right thing in the short term as well but you know in the short term unfortunately it has worked for them but it's not sustainable coming to your role in vedantu you've just joined them as a senior brand manager what is your role on a day to day basis how do you think does the marketing of a digital only brand differ from the marketing of a brand in which digital forms one part of the overall strategy no so let let me first address it in this way see digital does not become an important part of an overall brand strategy only because the brand is digital right or the brand is digital first uh, we need to move away i think the time has come that we need to move away from the age old bifurcation of above the line below the line digital social media see the line is blurring i mean it's it's not it's no longer planning for tv or planning for radio or planning for oh the line is blurring and slowly it's going to be invisible after a point of time uh, the whole conversation of digital versus offline needs to be steered towards the right media to reach the right tg for the right objective see uh, coming to my role uh, you know a brand manager needs to wear a lot of hats however the role becomes slightly complicated when you're looking at a service brand now let me explain what is the difference between a service brand and a product brand right 
building a brand quite simply is to ensure that you communicate the predictable consistent preferred experience that your brand gives to your consumers right now that predictable and consistent experience for a product brand becomes very obvious through standardization like a lace chip will be a lace chip every time you eat however however for brands that are service like a lot of moving pieces are involved across the consumer journey touch points to ensure that brand experience is consistent now the ideal example for this is going to be indigo right so indigo cannot rest or the brand manager at indigo cannot rest just by communicating uh, indigo's proposition on a oh or uh, or or making a very nice website it has to ensure that the brand experience is very consistent throughout the journey so as a brand manager at Vedantu, right, I need to ensure that this experience, expression, tone of voice gets delivered in every piece of communication across multiple categories that the brand offers its services, right? For this, a brand manager on a day-to-day basis needs to identify communication spaces, mm-hmm. understand competition and category, work with businesses to match the communication goals, study and understand different needs of media, uh, and... Uh, speak to consumers unearth insights and a lot more now it's just been two months for me at vidanto mm-hmm. but uh, the definition of a brand manager for a service brand almost remains the same i would like to now come to the crux of what this show is about my aim is to help people reach where you are you started your career with info edge specifically shiksha.com as a marketing manager how did you upskill yourself along the way to become what you are today Are there any specific tools that marketers should enable themselves with that will help them grow? Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty interesting question. And I wish someone had told me how to upskill myself. But, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's try to uh, rewind a bit and let's go a bit before I started my career as a marketing manager, right? Like a lot others, I started out as a software engineer, but soon realized that programming, uh, coding does not come naturally. Uh, there was always an inclination in getting into business management and now certain products and ads uh, were marketed is something that I used to regularly get interested in. Uh, The best way to upskill is to keep reading. It's as simple as that. Read as much as you can and it can never be enough. Uh, Start following people on uh, Twitter, read articles, subscribe to high quality publishers, keep up to date with what's happening around you know you, you just need to have a curiosity bend of mind right uh, uh, you know once you start questioning things and 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 once you have the right questions internet has a lot to offer to answer those questions so i didn't have to put any particular effort in upskilling uh, experience gives some sort of maturity uh, mentors you work with uh, teaches you a lot of things over and above uh, what i mentioned uh, I took it upon myself, right, uh, to start a blog, uh, you know, just to see if I really have the skin in the game, if I have it in me to critique, to yes. appreciate, to understand what goes behind in making a marketing campaign, even outside what I have been working on. So when I started my blog with hook, line and clincher, I just wanted to test myself how consistently can I put my views on marketing, uh, you know, in, in actual work. And uh, that that's one way of validation to see, you know, and, and that's a way of upskilling also because uh, you're trying to understand different categories, uh, different industries, uh, trying to understand the business objective, the creative brief that has gone behind uh, making a particular piece of communication, right? And that could be any piece of communication. A lot of times we just, you know, feel that marketing is all about advertising, but there's so much more behind that goes in making of a brand. So... That is one way of upskilling, uh, you know, the great work happening around you and form an opinion around it. Uh, there was a time also I remember reading Mother Pious Lady by Santosh Desai and, you know, one of the most uh, uh, revered marketers that India has seen. And I was completely blown away by the nuances that he brought up front in daily observations of India. And, you know, in the at the crux of it, it that is what is really, you know, everything when it comes to marketing is all about right understanding what's happening around you uh, trying to socially and culturally try to find relevance why people behave the way they do especially when you're in india and uh, and and then try to put it in practice in the way that you communicate to your users and uh, so so that, that that there's mother pious lady that i that i read which again started you know made me feel uh, 
or you know made me uh, compelled to think in a certain way as a marketer there's another book called uh, start with why which was recommended to in my previous organization as well which forces people to think about the golden circle right like let me explain the golden circle uh, for you uh, most companies know uh, how they do most companies know what they do but a lot of companies do not know why they do it and that's when it all starts falling right so when you when when a company or when a marketer or when a business person helps a company identify the core purpose of why they exist so let me let me, let, let me give you an example here right zappos zappos was something it, it was an e-commerce company but their core purpose or the core uh, mission of the company of why they exist was devised around delivering happiness and everything they did then tied back to that uh again very cliche example but apple apple apple's core purpose of why they exist as a company was to think differently now even if they made iphones even if they made macbooks even if they made uh, apple music even if they have to make pancakes tomorrow right they just would apply that core purpose into whatever they used to make and that's how uh, that's 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 again one of the reasons why uh uh the golden circle exists and gives a lot of meaning so a lot of these comp a lot of these books a lot of these uh articles uh gave inspiration to upskill yourself constantly as a marketer to keep thinking about theories about models about uh about a lot of uh, uh fundamental things that goes behind uh you know being a good marketer which is not just about advertising uh again uh, the another very good example was the tipping point by malcolm gladwell is another interesting book that talks about our social behavior and trends become marketing epidemics that will help us understand categories and businesses uh i used to also follow a lot of uh, i still follow a lot of hbr blogs like harvard business reviews blogs uh the case study led insightful marketing articles really helps uh, helps a lot in your day to day thinking um, there's a very interesting new age blog also called lenny's newsletter uh and one of the articles is how the biggest consumer apps got their first 1000 customers and in that article only there is a bookmark uh, or there is a link uh which talks about finding the right product market fit so you know all of these gamut of things that makes marketer what a marketer is is uh something that you need to keep reading uh be self aware uh keep questioning uh and you will upskill yourself just like that <laughs> coming to the process of hiring what hard skills do you look for when you hire someone do you have a list that you kind of check off mentally while interviewing a candidate I I have in fact asked this question to a lot of my mentors uh you know uh, what what do you ask in a in an interview how do you judge whether a particular person is the right uh, uh fit for you or your team and your company and uh, you know it's always not dependent on uh whether the person has that particular skill or not but a lot is also dependent in terms of whether that person fits the company culture as well you know you might be a highly skilled individual but maybe at times uh, you know uh, you don't fit in the culture of uh, the what the company is all about and that's why you might not so it's it's uh, you might not get selected right so there is no set formula that i follow but i try as much as i can to judge the intent of the person what he or she wants to achieve in the next 3 to 5 years so that it ties back to why they are joining this a lot of my conversation in the interview revolves around what they have done in the past uh, what could have been done differently do you think 100% remote work uh, in marketing is a foreseeable reality or do you think people will have to come back to offices post the vaccination <laughs> i personally don't think 100% remote working is foreseeable see uh, you know i myself find a bit you know difficult to collaborate uh, ideate discuss brainstorm uh, when it's when it's uh, completely remote uh, see it, it's a, it's a different thing if you're an individual contributor and you know you don't need so much face time with your team members uh, and there are roles in marketing that allow you to do that uh, but you know i personally feel marketing needs a lot of face time i mean it is and never will be a one person target or job right uh, a lot of hands a lot of ideas a lot of working with creative partners goes behind making one campaign which is like a 20 second ad you know i feel a model 
will not be 100% remote uh, it'll be hybrid uh, you know where you're working from home for a couple of days and you come to work for a couple of more and uh, i mean that's that's the that's the future but certainly not 100% at least i wouldn't be able to do it okay if you have to pick say 3 to 6 keywords from a cv that will impress you what would they be she it's a it's a very uh, tricky situation see words will never do the justice uh, especially when you you know try to gain uh, as you have gained experience in the last 6 to 7 years uh, especially after 3 years you know words on the cv will start yeah. sounding the same of every cv that you read i would like to see some sort of uh, growth that the person has shown in the cv uh, it has to be creativity and if there is some sort of diligence that is coming across but again see you can put whatever you want but uh, it's it's the conversation at the end of the day however you know for people who are watching this if they want to sort of just have a look at my cv oh yeah that will be great we can have a look at your cv okay wow okay this is amazing this is so different from the regular stuff that we see every day Uh, I would hire you if I had the money unfortunately I don't but more importantly I don't even have a company so no no we'll see your next move as a company very soon but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, see uh, the the thing is uh, as i said right that that words will never do justice to your cv uh, right. what you what you need to do is ba- basically your cv is supposed to just stand out right and uh, if you just have a look at uh, mine a lot of uh, job interviews that i managed to get after this uh, uh, i i got to hear that that you know you, we know that you are not the right fit for the role but we still wanted to talk to you because this looks interesting so so that's the job of the cv that you're supposed to uh, that, that it's supposed to be done especially when you are applying for a creative or a marketing role right and uh, you don't need to write everything that you've done right uh, so so if you just go you just need to give a glimpse of uh, what you're about uh, your your keywords over there uh, you need to quickly mention some key achievements that you've done in your uh, in your work in the last uh, couple of jobs or two three jobs that you've done uh, and then maybe show them some glimpse you know make it some sort of interactive we are living in a digital age right if if uh, people are still relying on printing out your cvs and you know the set format that has been set in b schools and if you're still sticking to that format it's not going to cut cut across so just just try and see uh, how you can stand out in your cv so see once you've managed to get that uh, conversation going and uh, once you've managed to get past that door where your cv gets shortlisted and you had a chance to speak to at least someone from the company that you want to work for right then it's up to you and then it's up to the entire conversation that goes after so let cv do that job uh, summarize it and uh, in in as uh, creative way as possible give some of your uh, links to work outside the work profile as well which talks talks about your what your personality is all about uh, and i think it should do the job Okay my last question is let's say there is somebody who's done software engineering for 5 years and has no exposure to brand or marketing they are not in a position to get a marketing degree how can that person get into digital marketing what can they do to impress a marketer in your position how can they make a cv that can get shortlisted see she, see a lot of engineering folks have uh, entered pure play performance marketing and you know basically performance marketing digital marketing growth marketing growth hacking whatever you want to say involves a lot of data and analytical thinking uh, no you know not to discard that you know creative still stays at the core of how your ads will perform uh and uh, and also the fact that you need to know your consumers you need to have that sense of targeting cohorting segmenting uh and and trying to reach out because digital gives you that power but uh, at the end of the day performance marketing or digital marketing is still not as subjective you know as advertising or brand marketing is where you know i like an ad versus you like an ad uh having said that you know getting well versed with all the metrics of performance marketing is a uh, is is the, like the first step that you need to start with um how how those all of those metrics are related to each other um uh, you know uh, get certifications uh, from google and facebook they offer a lot of online tools to help you learn their platforms their ad serving platforms uh do internships uh, spend some money yourself see how it performs uh, what it does 
a lot depends on the uh, you know companies who are okay with grooming and mentoring people with no digital marketing experience but i strongly feel as much as it sounds daunting right it is not rocket science and once you have a way around with numbers and ability to handle the tools uh, you know understanding the customers getting the business objectives and tying back to your digital marketing objectives it's uh, it's it's uh, you will and and you know uh, you you should be able to uh, you should be through if you if you appear analytically sound and data driven in your interview so and, and a lot of uh, digital marketing blogs like uh, hubspot uh, neil patel uh, moz.com uh, and i mean there are innumerable digital marketing articles and blogs right now that offer you great advice and tips on how to ace your performance marketing uh, and you can easily learn it online it's not it's not that difficult so if you are an engineer right now uh you just need to ensure that you apply all the uh data uh analytical excel skills uh in in building that up uh, while you also hone your creative side of things and uh learn the self serving platforms and that should be fun thanks a lot for coming to your next move thank you so much for having me here and uh, it's a great thing that you're doing and it's going to help a lot of people and all the best thank you prateek all the best to you If you like this episode please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the next video